What's up guys, Derek, more plates, more dates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about having a gallon of milk a day, also known as the GOMAD diet. This is something a few of you guys asked me about. Is it a viable diet model for gaining a shit ton of muscle? And is it a uh, ideal strategy? You know, it is something that uh, isn't super popular, but I guess it's been, you know, picking up traction over the years. And some people that are hard gainers have kind of uh, veered towards trying it and have had some success with it. So people want to get my insight on what I think. So this is the main article that I'm going to be reading from that kind of outlines what it is and like why you would want to do it. Um, and I guess it's one of the more popular ones. GOMAD, gain 25 pounds in 25 days with milk and squats. GOMAD stands for a gallon of milk a day. It's a simple weight gain diet for skinny guys who struggle to eat a lot. Just drink a gallon of milk a day on top of eating three meals a day and lifting heavy. That extra, extra milk adds about 2,400 calories and 120 grams of protein. GOMAD therefore makes it easier to reach a caloric surplus to gain weight. It has helped the most stubborn hard gainers and ectomorphs gain up to 25 pounds in only 25 days. If you're skinny, underweight, and can't gain weight no matter what, you may want to try GOMAD. So I think it goes without saying like 25 pounds in 25 days is a little bit probably too fast where you're not going to be gaining an ideal proportion of fat free mass lean tissue relative to shit weight so even if you're an ectomorph even if this works i would not i would not be pushing it to this extreme but i can understand and at least appreciate the uh i don't know the uh conviction behind the diet model in terms of how effective it is that i can literally crank you up this quick um why milk why a gallon of milk a day am i going to go through all this shit i don't know uh, let's see it contains about eight grams of protein per cup it's 80 percent casein 20 percent whey helps with muscle blah 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 has some micro has uh minerals and micronutrients and whatnot you don't need to buy gatorade has electrolytes in it saves you money so it's almost like the nature's weight gainer so instead of you having to go get mutant mass shakes from fucking gnc carry it home on your shoulder because you don't drive yet and you're fucking, you know, 17 years old and you need to carry 30 pounds of goddamn weight gainer on like 20 blocks back to your house. Um, you just get milk from the grocery store instead. However, the only problem that I see off the bat is um, the, uh, like it, it actually does have like a reasonably broad spectrum micronutrient and mineral profile to the point where it's not, it's not as far-fetched and ridiculous as it may appear on the surface. However, the concern I have off the bat is the fat content concurrently with the sugar content. So anyways, why a gallon of milk? One gallon of milk contains 2,400 calories, 120 grams protein, 200 grams carbs, 120 grams fat. Most guys need around 2,500 to 2,800 calories a day to maintain their body weight. So you can get all your maintenance calories from drinking a gallon of milk a day, eat three small meals a day, plus a gallon of milk, and you have almost 4,000 calories. Um, that is true. Um, you only need about 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight for optimal muscle building when lifting heavy weights, so a gallon of whole milk covers your pro base protein requirements for the day. Don't need to drink extra protein shakes. I guess that is true. Bottom line, Go Mad is a simple and effective way to get lots of calories and protein with minimal work. Um, so anyway, they outline how it seems like it is for guys who've been ectomorphs, no matter what, they eat a lot and they still can't gain weight. Not for people who have endomorphic type bodies. Um, how much to eat on it, adding in, uh, let's see. Yeah, like this is kind of like based on the premise that a skinny guy can't eat enough food, which I guess at that point, if you need something that is not overly satiating, like something that you can really just slam easily, um, and obviously I think it should go without saying that if you're lactose intolerant, like that should be considered before you go on this diet. Like it's going to be quite the rude awakening. If you start the go mad diet and you don't realize your digestive system is simply not equipped to handle it. And then you shit your goddamn brains out. Like some people can't even handle like a little bit of milk, let alone a gallon. So obviously that should be a, a you know, fucking fleshed out first, but Let's see, won't all the fat uh, from GOMAD make me fat? Fat doesn't make you fat, Ex excess calories do. The pro proper question is therefore, won't all those calories make me fat? Common mistake for skinny guys who want to build muscle without gaining fat. The problem is that is a hard thing to do, blah, 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 blah. You can only gain two pounds of muscle per month. Well, then why the fuck are we trying to gain 25 pounds <laughs> in 25 days, dude? Like, does that not seem a bit like an extreme recommendation? 
Um, so like, I don't think you need a gallon, dude. Like, I think this is a reasonable approach to supplement into your diet for sure. Much like a, you know, weight gainer or like calorie dense protein shake might do as well. Uh, which I'll get into shortly about how reasonable of a nutritious item it is. Cause a lot of people just think, oh, this is just sugar and fat. And it's not actually that helpful besides, you know, some calcium. When you actually break it down and put it into chronometer, it's surprisingly decent, which I'll show you shortly. Um, let's see, you can start with a quarter gallon to add about 600 calories. Like the approach that would make more sense in my opinion would be you have your base diet and you're plateaued and then you add in milk titration style on top, not just like replace the whole fucking diet with a gallon of milk. Like I guess if you actually have such dysregulated fucking leptin and ghrelin levels that you cannot eat shit um, and you have to slam something that's liquid, yeah, I guess it makes sense. And if you have no other options, it's like the last resort. But um, let's see. Can I do Gomad with soy milk? No, you can't. Large amounts of soy milk can lower your test and cause erectile dysfunction. Holy shit. That is a bold claim. Um, can I drink low fat or skimmed milk to avoid fat gains? Again, fat doesn't make you fat. Blah, blah, blah. Do I have to drink Gomad every day? Yes, it's your average calorie intake for in the week, month, and year that, makes, that matters for gaining weight. Um, okay, just a bunch of dumb fucking questions. Can I do go mad with chocolate milk? Chocolate milk has more calories than regular milk, but those extra calories come from the extra sugar content that make it tastier. Eating tons of artificial sugar is bad for you. So anyways, the milk itself, not just like chocolate milk, obviously terrible. Milk itself has a fuck ton of sugar, dude, especially if you're having like full fat milk with it. Like this is not something you want to be having the majority of your diet model based around unless you literally can't eat fucking food. Like this is like a last resort thing in my opinion. Um, yeah, okay, more fucking dumb questions. So anyways, the breakdown is like 120 calories per cup as far as I recall. Like here it is on Google, 124 calories, 2% fat. And um, I'm gonna get into chronometer and show you guys exactly what you can expect. So let's type in milk. We, by the way, this is the best way to break down your diet into figuring out if you are micronutrient deficient or not. Too many people are using MyFitnessPal and or just not tracking and they're just figuring out how many calories they're eating and have no idea if their diet is shitty or not. It's not that hard to plug it into chronometer and see where you have deficiencies and holes to plug up. So anyways, let's put in, uh, what is a gallon? So we have uh, 16 cups equals a gallon. So when you put in 16 cups, you can see that we have, as far as energy requirements, I think this was like an old calorie uh, goal I had when I was like some cut like a long time ago. I haven't actually been on chronometer in a while because I kind of just, most of the shit I kind of just know at this point. But so ignore this. Obviously, we're not going to say we're almost exceeding our calorie goals having a fucking gallon of milk a day. For people who are bulking, obviously your calories burned will be your calorie intake will be much higher in this, obviously. Okay, so let's go look at the things that uh, really matter in this. So breaking down fat, obviously you're exceeding, you know, the allotted fat requirements of this diet breakdown based on the calorie allotment, just with the gallon of milk, not by a lot, but you are. Um, protein amino acid profile is pretty broad spectrum with the only exception being cysteine, evidently which otherwise is something that you can get from a, like, again, it becomes pretty obvious where the lack of diversity comes from having the giant amount of your calories coming from milk. A lot of things that you're going to be missing come from other whole food sources like red meat, like eggs, things of this nature are going to hit the other things that milk simply cannot hit. But honestly, it's pretty impressive what it can hit on its own with nothing else. Like we have B1 totally filled. B2, totally filled by a fuck ton. B5, B6, B12, all completely capped out. Vitamin A, vitamin D, um, copper, calcium, way the fuck over where you need it. Definitely need to make sure your vitamin D intake is on point, which fortunately it seems like, you know, is, is 1,991 IU going to be adequate? You might need to supplement a bit on top of that still, but that depends a bit on your own genetic response. Magnesium, almost topped out. Frankly, I've seen like diets with, tons of variety not hitting their magnesium intake so um this was kind of you know cool to see phosphorus potassium selenium sodium zinc all topped out again these rdas are just baseline metrics to kind of give you a 
gauge of you're hitting like the bare minimum though. So keep that in mind. Doesn't necessarily mean it's optimal. It means you are hitting bare minimum shit. Now, as far as backfilling areas that are missing, niacin, folate, obviously something you would have, like the lack of vegetables in this diet where we just, well, the, the, it's not even a fucking diet. It's just 16 cups of milk. Obviously you would have something like, uh, you know, veggies in your diet. You would have something like actual red meat. You would have something like eggs. Other high quality sources of food that are micronutrient dense should also be added in. And that would honestly clean up the majority of this lackluster, um, you know, the sections that are lackluster with the milk. Now, again, some of this stuff, would you be hitting it with like a more reasonable milk intake? Perhaps not. If you mega dose the fuck out of most, a lot of foods, you, you're going to be topping out a lot of different RDAs. But again, it's not like this is a diet that is for the majority of people. It's for those who are extreme ectomorphs and just like have shit appetites, evidently. Like it, they exist, you know, some people need to actually do this stuff to gain weight. How many people need GOMAD specifically? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like most people should be okay at least eating three reasonable sized meals per day, not three 500 calorie meals, like three, I don't know, 750 to 800 calorie meals, like should be more than doable for the vast majority of people. And then above and beyond that, if you need to add some milk, like, sure, but I mean, like, again, is it the best choice when you actually look back and see the amount of fucking sugar in this shit with the concurrent fat intake? I don't know, you know? I guess it depends on how uh, well you are partitioning this shit, how well you are actually burning up and using what you need to be using um, to kind of, I don't know, balance out the excessive amounts of sugar you're taking in. Like, are you going to actually have adequate insulin response to deal with that? Or are you going to become um, insulin resistant by implementing this diet model where you're just banging the fuck out of yourself with exorbitant amounts of sugar and fat at the same time? I don't really know, to be honest. I think it depends on your you know, energy expenditure, your actual activity levels, how hard you're training, how much muscle you have, obviously, how much are you going to actually utilize, how much is going to be shuttled into cells effectively, how much is going to be overburdening overburdening your body and just causing excessive fat storage. That is also going to play into, again, like the GOMAD guy mentioned, how far above your maintenance you really are. Like if you're in 25 pound in 25 day territory, obviously you're setting yourself up for failure with insulin resistance progression in my opinion. So I would not go that aggressive off the bat where you are literally gaining a pound a day. That would be too fucking much. And uh, like he said, again, two pounds of muscle in whatever span of time it was, it was, uh, you can only gain two pounds of muscle a month. And like, honestly, that's a fuck ton. I don't even think anybody can do that unless you like just started working out. You'd be looking at 24 pounds of muscle in a year. Like it's not going to happen, dude. Like first year, maybe. But I mean, after that, this is a fucking far cry of being realistic. So should you be having, you know, enough milk to hit 25 pounds in 25 days when you are cognizant of the fact that even as a fucking newbie, you can only gain two pounds of muscle per month. Any, any realistically can't, I don't think, in my opinion, most people would not be able to accomplish that unless they literally just started. No, dude, I would not be eating this much. I would be having a less than a gallon and having a reasonable broad spectrum diet model and then adding this on top if you like milk. At the end of the day, this is just like a nutritious food that tastes good and is easy to eat, you know? There's nothing really special about it. It is, uh, has a lot of calcium, has a lot of phosphorus, has a lot of, a lot of the shit that you see here, you know, it's pretty rich in. It's actually a pretty reasonably nutritious thing, but the fat and sugar content is less than ideal. And obviously the majority of your diet should not be based around this thing in an ideal world either. You would have, you know, your red meat in there. You'd have your eggs in there. You'd have your greens in there. You'd have your colorful veggies in there. You would have other shit in there. You'd have fruit in there. There's a lot of stuff that's missing here. And it's not just coming down to just slam yourself with more fucking milk until you're diarrheaing, obviously. So, and I don't know how many people could actually tolerate this digestive wise. Like there are a lot of people who are lactose intolerant and then above and beyond that, people who can actually tolerate it. How many cups can you actually tolerate per day? You know, for fucking perpetually <laughs> for however long this diet lasts. I don't know, but I would speculate that, uh, you know, a lot of people would have problems following this. And again, it's not that fucking shitty. It's just not ideal whatsoever in my opinion. I think, Again, at the end of the day, my overall stance on it is it's less ridiculous than it actually sounds on paper. Like when you hear go mad gallon of milk a day, you're like, what the fuck? Like this is mental. However, 
if you literally cannot eat enough and it's the, just the make or break between you either making progress and not making progress, are you better off doing nothing and like never achieving your goals because you simply cannot muster up the appetite to eat whole food or adding in something liquid on top that is not very um, killing of your appetite. Like it's very, very easy to slam a decent amount of. Obviously you gotta go with it, dude. And milk is, you know, nutritious enough. You know, perhaps it's fucking sugar laden and fat laden and it may um, put you in a position where if you're eating in a huge surplus, you may be setting yourself up for a bit of excessive fat gain. But at the end of the day, that's mostly going to come down to how much you're exercising. Are you actually using the, using the nutrients effectively or are you just sitting around on your ass and slamming a fuck ton of milk to try and gain 25 pounds in 25 days? So just be reasonably like logical, I guess, with your uh, expectations. And I don't really think a lot of people who are even watching this will find this applicable to them. But at the end of the day, if you're a skinny dude who literally cannot gain weight, maybe this diet model at a lower milk intake, supplemented on top and like titrated up <laughs> accordingly based on your individual needs would be a reasonable approach. So that would be like your current diet model that you have you know, not had success with adding a bit of milk on top of that, you know? Not ridiculous to think that that might be a uh, reasonable strategy to kind of uh, explore. But again, you know, like start with like one to two cups, dude. You don't need to go to fucking 16 off the bat. So, um, and you certainly should not be, the main thing I disagree with is having the majority of your diet based around the milk. It should be based around your wide variety diet. And then above and beyond that is the milk. You don't pull your fucking calories back to 500, 400 calorie meals in order to fit your gallon of milk a day. Rather, you would have your 700, 800, 900 calorie meals that are actually hitting fucking everything that you need. And then above and beyond that, if you literally cannot gain weight because you can't eat enough of the good whole foods, you supplement some milk on top. That would be my suggestion. And of course, you know, obviously milk fits into a whole food diet as is. It's just the 16 fucking cups that does not in general. So that is my stance on GoMad. Not as ridiculous as it may seem when you actually plug it into chronometer. However, sugar and fat content, concurrently not a huge fan of. And I think the obvious approach to a balanced diet model is everyone would, you know, the majority of people would accept that that is the reasonable approach and then adding this on top as a supplemental means of achieving weight gain. That would be a smart strategy, in my opinion, for individuals who are having a tough time gaining weight. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Have any of you guys done the GOMAD diet? If so, how did it go? Did you end up uh, shitting your brains out? Or did it go well and you gained a shit ton of muscle? Like, what was, <laughs> what was the outcome of your experience? Let us all know in the comments down below. I guess maybe don't be too graphic with the, <laughs> with the comments, though. When I said shit your brains out, that might be... a uh, a bit much but anyways let me know um all the comments help the algorithm they're much appreciated like subscribe check out my blog moreplacemoredates.com follow me on instagram and moreplacemoredates facebook snapchat bitshoot twitter tiktok apple podcast um if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i'm associated with in the video description below my trt clinic it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home gorilla mind nootropic formulas gorilla mode pre-workout formulas i design myself from scratch recommended lab tests and diagnostics and the recommended diet model I would probably start with if you are a newbie who doesn't know how to gain weight. Um, before you try GoMad, I would definitely try uh, the diet that I've linked in the video description. This is the most idiot proof diet 101 for people who are trying to gain high quality weight and maintain high quality performance whilst being mindful of gut health, sleep hygiene practices, and just everything that would be involved in creating an all around elite, well rounded athlete rather than just trying to gain as much weight as physically possible, as quickly as possible. And this diet model is designed to keep you hungry too in a more, I would say, smart and balanced approach rather than just trying to slam liquid sugar essentially. So I would check, I would check out that diet model, give that a shot. And if above and beyond that, you were unable to achieve your goals, then you know maybe circle back to the go mad shit. But the, uh, the vertical diet, I think, is the better approach for newbies who are having a hard time gaining weight. I have not yet uh, tried a diet model myself um, using any other approach that was more effective for somebody who is trying to gain the maximum amount of muscle tissue and strength, you know, just overall performance metrics at one time whilst being mindful of all of the other things that come along with uh, high quality athletic performance and recovery. So I would definitely check that out if you're interested. It is in the video description below. Um, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.